civil engineering practice is concerns itself with safety and then it evolved to reliability-based design followed by risk-informed design uh, and resilience looks at beyond failure to deal with recovery. So it's really a natural extension of what civil engineers have been doing. It's not a new concept by any means, uh, but it's become so important because but what we're learning is that the past is not necessarily the best predictor of the future anymore, that there are changing conditions, and resiliency really captures uh, that opportunity to look at uh, how we might deal with change and to what degree we want to deal with that change. And that to me is a game changer in the whole engineering profession. You're not simply going back to the handbooks and doing the projects that you've done for ages. You're going to be working on new projects and new conditions and trying to figure out how do you build in things like robustness, adaptability, and resilience. So if you have New York City, for example, when it gets hit with a hurricane or a terrorist attack, it's the economic center of the world, and it has far-reaching effects. Same thing in Tokyo, a major earthquake or a tsunami in Tokyo could cause a worldwide uh, recession, if not even a depression. Uh, but that's, that's something that a community needs to think about. Often when we do cost-benefit analysis, we're thinking about one project, and really that project may have a rippling effect across the entire community if it doesn't work. If the electrical system goes down, it's very difficult for anything to come back to life until the electrical system comes back. If the roads are blocked, the people that restore the electric power can't get to the electric power to restore it. So there's these complicated interdependencies that have to be thought of. Versus what we've done uh, as engineers for the last hundred years is make things bigger, make things centralized, but that's more vulnerable than having things distributed. You know, from a climate change standpoint, if you have smaller plants versus one large plant, um, you're better off and more resilient to changes that could occur or a tornado or an electrical outage. And how can we make the business case that says that, uh, that, that you shouldn't be relying on massive injections of cash every time there's an, a disaster, that we should have that resiliency that means that this infrastructure and these houses and communities that people live will actually be far more enduring. But resilience is critical and it's very important to infrastructure because uh, it looks at the long term uh, impacts that, that climate change have, that uh, changing operating conditions have on, on projects, and it looks at how do they adapt to those changing conditions and how do they bounce back from situations when an extreme weather event occurs, for example. These storms are happening all across the country. We joke that 100-year storms are happening every week. When you see something like we did in New York State with Superstorm Sandy, we had massive flooding and massive damage. And so resiliency has really become a word that people are a lot more familiar with. We have to build infrastructure that can withstand the wet weather that we're getting, these, uh, these massive storms. The cities that are leading the practice are essential to help us understand what works and what doesn't. Engineers cannot implement resilience alone. It, it takes a lot of people to uh, undertake a implementing a resilience program. I think engineers need to be talking to a lot of different kinds of people to uh, create a, a well-functioning, resilient world. You know, when we, when we talk about uh, community resilience, this, the stakeholders that are involved in that is really everybody in the community. The public is involved, the leadership of the community is involved, the designers are involved, the contractors are involved, everybody has a part to play. From my perspective as a county government official, I would encourage engineers to be both the technical expertise that we need and the leadership that we need. Resilience and sustainability have a, a number of commonalities, but there's also a number of differences. Sustainability is a concept or a notion that's broader than uh, resilience. Sustainability includes uh, resilience. A non-resilient system is non-sustainable. So I think of sustainability as being the things that you do to last for the long term. I think of resilience being a more active response to the threats that may occur uh, in the future. I'm very concerned about the future, but in the same sense I'm very optimistic that the engineers of today and tomorrow and the new ones we're getting out of college will have some excitement perhaps that they never had before. Certainly there's some serious problems out there. We continue what we're doing and we 
continue to warm the planet, we continue to use up resources, the challenges are going to be great and our challenge particularly is going to be how do we maintain our quality of life in this new era. It's important that we all pay attention to what's going on worldwide because we can learn from each other. It's one planet, it's one set of hazards, and it's, it's, it's one set of resources that we have to work with. It's it really to our benefit to, to pay attention to what happens and to pay attention to how people respond, how they're able to work around the issues so that we can find the most effective way to create resilient communities.